Hello all and welcome to another edition of videos. Today I wanted to uh, share with you a uh, match that I played in a recent um, large team match between uh, Stevenage and Letchworth. I was playing uh, for Stevenage. Um, so the essential format of the match was I believe 13 versus 13 players, so two clubs combining together to play each other. It was a really interesting event, really fun event. The, the time controls were 30 minutes plus 5 second increment and the idea of it was that you play your first game and then you play your second game um, not too long afterwards. So it was quite a nice relaxing evening, you know, I think it was really, really fun. I don't know what the end result was, I assume Stevenage won. When we left I think we were about like 5 nil up or something so um, we were doing very well. But um, I just wanted to share the two games from that. They were very interesting, and uh, you know, I think the first game I think was really had some very fun and interesting tactics uh, involved in it. And the second game, not not as interesting, but still still kind of good in terms of you know how to close out matches and stuff like that. So uh, we'll share with you uh, those games today. So first match I was playing as Whites. Um, I was playing against a French defence. And I went into the advanced variation. This is my um, my systematic setup that I have against uh, the advanced variation, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, so C3, Knight to C6. So all these all these moves are really um, trying to generate a bit of pressure on the D4 points. And um, typically in the advanced variation, the main struggle involves this pawn here. And uh, if if White is able to hold on to the pawn or control the pawn best way he can then he normally has a good good edge in the position because he's got this space advantage here so um so that's why all these moves have been played but the problem with the advance is obviously we've had to waste a tempo moving forward um and that could have been a tempo that we could have gained against you know if we're playing some of the knight fc knight d2 stuff um but nonetheless it's still still a very popular very uh fashionable opening uh, particularly at club level Okay, so this this bishop d7 idea, so the purpose of this is to stop this uh, very common trap. I'll show you what this trap is now. So after the queen comes here, so putting all this pressure on this pawn, um, white can uh, create this little trap. And after a couple captures, um, black here could actually capture here. And this would be a massive mistake. As uh, so now after captures... Um, Black can't capture back this this knight here, otherwise he loses this queen. So um, that's why when we go back here, this uh, bishop's play to d7, it stops that uh, potential threat and that potential trap from occurring. So b6 and a castle here. So this is a very interesting variation. So I'm actually gambiting a pawn here. You may notice I only have two defenders. I no longer have that little trap line I was talking about. So black, if he wants to, can just capture here. And after captures, and there's two main continuations. So I used to play um, knight to d2, which is another separate gambit, which is also very powerful. But in this position, I actually played uh, knight to c3. Oh, sorry, I didn't play that. <laughs> that would be a mistake. Uh, I played captures here. And after queen captures, so obviously gaining back the material, I now play knight to c3. And this is known as the Milner Barry attack. You may notice here now that um, black has a decision. He can either just retreat away with his queen, um, or he could capture this pawn. Now I'll show you a safer line that I think is much better, and I showed him in the analysis afterwards because he's never never seen this gambit before. Um, but a6 I think is a really powerful move, and the purpose of this is now black has created almost like an escape square for his queen. Um, but in this position he decided to capture on e5, so accepting the double pawn sacrifice that I'd offered him. So what does white really gain from this? So he sacrificed two pawns, but now he's going to get quite a fast developmental attack against black. You'll see here this rook will come in with tempo. This bishop can at some point later on come here and attack the queen on this lovely diagonal. So we'll see how it will progress in just a moment. So uh, e here. And there's, uh, <coughs> there's two main moves here. Uh, queen to d6 is the first move 
um, which just holds on to this pawn as now I'm threatening to capture this pawn you see if he goes anywhere else if let's say he goes to b8 I can actually capture this pawn here if I wanted to um, so d8 is very strong and um, you know there's some real complicated lines here one one particular line is the knight coming here forcing potentially an exchange here of pieces but then white argues that now this uh, king's stuck in the center so although he's given up two pawns you know he's got quite a powerful position here against uh, the black king um, it's considered I believe equal but um, again it's a really complicated line there's lovely things like the queen coming here bishop coming to f4 and well to be honest with you white white just gets quite a powerful attack for the cost of two pawns so I think that's not too bad another move is uh, queen to b8 so giving up the pawn but actually kind of generating his own counterplay along here but now white has a really interesting move here queen to d uh, g8 so attacking uh, this weak square here and um, yeah black can come under a bit of problems if he's not careful in a lot of these lines so um, but I won't focus too much on that I'll show you what he actually did play in this position unfortunately he blundered here with queen to c7 which is just a pretty poor move um, so now obviously I did the capture but the difference between the this and the last two moves that I showed you is here that white gets a tempo that he's gained so now the black king, queen has to move again and in this position he actually blundered he played a uh, queen to c6 uh, but I actually blundered myself as you'll see in just a moment um, so the correct move here was actually bishop to b5 a fantastic move so the idea of this is um, this um, this um, this queen is going to be sort of lost very quickly. He could try queen to d6 here. Um, but I'll show you what he can't do first. Obviously, if he tries to capture this uh, bishop here, I have this lovely uh, family fork here, you'll see. Um, if he tries to capture the knight as well, this doesn't work either, as now I can capture the queen. And you'll see here that um, this rook is pinning the pawn. So, um, so he can't do that. So really... The only only good move is queen to d6, but this falls to this move now. So um, bishop to f4, and again he can't really just capture capture this as um, as well. Obviously the the knight's protecting it, so he can't do that. But um, he could play to maybe c5, trying to get out of the line of fire. But now I just keep getting tempo gained here. And again, he can't capture this bishop, he can't capture this knight. This queen's going to have to be running all over the place. Um, there's only one game, there's two games in fact played here. Um, uh, two two bullet games in the looks of it after the capture here. And uh, white is just completely lost here. Um, but there's not really much else that this black queen can do. It's just having to move around the board. This is now coming in with a threat. Really, really powerful stuff. So um, there's no wonder that this scores so well. But I played bishop to e4, and I, this had sort of a similar idea. I was trying to fret um, coming to, to come into this square to open up this discovered attack. Uh, in this position, my opponent played uh, queen to c8, so getting out of the, the line of fire. And now I played um, bishop to f4. He captured here, and instead of capturing back, which would have been a better move, I actually played this move instead. Um, which is actually considered a blunder. Um, it would kind of equalize the position. This is better. And I just want to try and just quickly understand why again. So after maybe bishop here, we obviously always get this um, this tempo stuff here. So this is, yeah, this is quite powerful now. Um, as after a few captures here, yeah, this has got to be quite good then. Um, you know, you can't, you can't really, can't really move this this rook now. You see here that these squares are all gone. If it tries to come here, maybe. Well, that's just it's just lights out, isn't it? Really, at this point, um, really powerful stuff. So there's a lot. There's too much pressure um, mounting 
which is why I think this is probably a little bit better. But I, I did play this way, and my idea was obviously what I was worried about was um, if I captured this way, and then I went in with the rook, um, that this bishop could potentially come over here. So I'll just show you an example. If, let's say, I went here with the rook, you'll see here that this bishop can maybe block this potential threat. It's still winning for black, but um, in fact, actually, the... Uh, this is the correct move here. Really powerful stuff. So if he tries to move here, you've got this lovely fret here, which I kind of missed a couple times um, if I did go into that variation. Anyway, he played his, uh, his knight to e7, and then I played rook to c1. Um, so here, he again kind of made a mistake. He kind of captured with the queen. If he, in fact, captured with the bishop first, this would have been a lot better. As now, I can capture here, and he captures back with, let's say, the rook. And what's interesting about this position here is it's it's actually a little bit difficult for white to really claim he's got much an advantage. Materially speaking, um, you'll notice here that actually black is winning, uh, but white does seem to have all the attack here. So if he's able to keep the attack going, he should be able to, to win in this position. Um, but anyway, so I captured here with the check, so that was a nice, nice uh, intermezzo move. So he captured the king, and I captured on c1. And from here, it was quite a, uh, quite an easy sort of mop up for my opponent. Here. He played a rook to c8, queen to e3. He tried b6 to try and stop me from capturing uh, this pawn on a, a7. It's not particularly strong. Um, queen to e5, so I'm just threatening just to come in here with my, um, with my queen cause him some problems. He tried rook to c6, trying to stop that potential threat. I went to b8. a5 was played to again stop that capture. And now I came sweeping in with this lovely move, so uh, rook, rook takes on e7. The idea of this is if he captures with the, the king here, I can come over the check, and then this rook falls. And if he captures with the bishop, which is what he did play, I then uh, capture his rook. So uh, ending, pretty much ending the game here. The game did go on. He did have one last little trick. So he played D, yeah, D6 here. And I've got to be really careful here. Because if I just capture this bishop. Uh oh. Checkmate and one. So that's not good. So I played uh, G3 here. Just to stop that threat. Uh, he captured here. I captured back. And H6 was played. There's a last little trap. Hopefully you haven't fooled for it. Um, obviously I can't capture here. He's got this, and then this game is completely, uh, yeah, completely open again. I think, in fact, Black's probably got a small edge because he's got this lovely passed pawn here. Um, so uh, I've got to be careful of that, obviously. So I played uh, f5 here just to stop this rook from coming here. Rook to f6, I captured now, and I captured on h6. In fact, he just resigned here. It was, it was not really much more more point playing from this position. Um, but a really interesting uh, opening idea. Um, you know, I think the Milner Barry Gambit really does offer quite a lot if um, if Black is unaware of the, the position from here. Going to the second game, as I say, it's not the most interesting game, this one. Um, there, it was a London system that was played. Um, so there was a sort of systematic development. I decided to play this E4 idea. I don't know if it's any good. Um, I think the idea of it was I was maybe thinking about exchanging this this knight this knight with this bishop, but the obvious problem if I always do that he can capture with the h pawn and then he gets this lovely uh, open file to attack me on. So I was never really too happy with that idea, um, but I decided to play for this weird stove wall type setup. In fact, here he had this interesting idea of playing um, bishop to, to h5, but he didn't play it in the end, and I just castled away. Um, I was a little bit worried by that threat, so that's why I castled immediately. Um, uh, so he then played, again, some systematic stuff, and um, we got into a very clustered center. I decided to play my queen to uh, d7 with the potential threat of maybe capturing here on um, on... Uh, C C three, but it never really materialised into anything though. He then captured on the C six, which was a real clear mistake. He was hoping that obviously after this capture that he can just take this bishop 
But as you'll see, this knight could come back. <laughs> so this, he completely blundered a, a, a piece for nothing, really. Um, so he played his knight into e5, bishop to b7. I was trying to hold on to this pawn as best I could. Um, it was a bit of a bit of a clunky move, though. King to d1. I wasn't really overly sure about this move. Um, and I, I mean, even even just playing this would have been slightly better. So he can connect the rooks, but but the king to d1, it just didn't really make much sense to me. Um, jump in with e4. Come here, the knight to g4, so just threatening to to capture here, and also potentially come in here. There was a couple of exchanges which I was quite happy with. Um, he then moved the bishop back. I then firstly gained a tempo on the queen with uh, a6. He moved his queen over here to maybe cause some problems here, but there's there's no real no real threats down here. I then actually played knight here, so now threatening to capture on f3 with a check, and there's not really much he can do. He tries to defend it with the king for just a moment, but now I played this this really nice queen move. So the idea of this um, coming into the square, um, trying to checkmate him there. A bishop to d1, and then I captured on uh, b2. He captured, I captured, and um, I mean, it was... In fact, actually, he resigned at this point here. I mean, there's not really much he can do here in this position. If he captures here, I capture back, he captures here. Um, I've got two, two quite strong continuations. Um, I could either capture here with the uh, with the queen which is first is very strong I mean uh, but I think even better is just capturing this rook first now where does his uh, king go he can maybe try and run back with the uh, with the queen but after a couple of exchanges I think this is this is definitely a, you know, a good advantage here I've got two rooks a bishop more pawns in him it's not really much worth playing this position as white um, so those are the two games. Um, as I said, the second one wasn't wasn't the most exciting, but the first one was pretty good. So um, anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye.